Hello everyone, welcome to Clay Formations, where we create things odd, eerie, cute, and creepy. Or anything else that falls out of my bizarre brain. So, if you want to see today's creation, just keep watching. Are you ready? Let's get to it. Hey Ringo, you want to watch a movie? Here, I've picked some out for you to watch. What's the matter, you don't like any of those? Well, if you don't like any of those, what do you want to see? Oh, no, not again. All right, let me see if I can find it. Yep, here it is. The Little Mermaid again. Okay, Ringo, here you go. Is this the one you want to see? Okay, come on, let's go watch it. Boy, you sure are spoiled. Shh, it's starting. After watching The Little Mermaid for the 20th time because Ringo loves it so much, I was inspired to create one of the poor, unfortunate souls. And as always, we start out with the armature wire. I'll be using my fixed jig at the beginning. What it is is a drill chuck that's attached to galvanized pipe and then attached to a flange on the bottom of my sculpture base. Now we'll bend it into the shape we need. That looks about right. Now we'll bulk it up with some aluminum foil, but not too much because we don't want them to be too thick. Yes, my friends, this aluminum sculpture can be yours for the low price of $5 trillion. Operators are standing by. No? <laughs> All right, we'll just do the base. We add some glue, squish it together, and out to the garage to chop it up and sand it down. show you how to attach the wood to my base. I take a half inch flange and I mark the holes. Then I drill the holes. Then I attach the flange to the wood. I have a flange that I attach to my turntable and I turn the base upside down, screw it on, and I have a secure base to sculpt on. I'll use some glue to attach this piece of coral that I found at the pet shop. Secure it down, paint it, and we have our base. Time for the liquid sculpey. And we coat the entire surface. Then we can start adding the clay. I had to wear gloves here because I didn't want to get all my camera equipment covered in liquid sculpey. Now we'll begin to make his pitiful and tortured face. It's here where I realized I'm having a bit of a problem because the clay is a little too soft. I didn't put any aluminum foil inside the head and it's not gonna work. I also realized that I made the mistake on his body. He's too wide up here and too thin down here. Silly me forgot to check my references. Never forget to check your references. We must operate at once. Now that he's successfully decapitated, we can turn him around to the right direction. And we must perform some more surgery. Yes, master. <laughs> there we go. Let's do this the right way now. What I should have done all along is put some tin foil as a head and then clay over that. That way I have more stability. I 
I'm using some pie weights here to size up the eyes. Now we'll take some Sculpey Primo translucent and make the eyes. After they're baked, we can put them on and then just add the clay over it. Now we can start blocking them out. Just getting in the basic shapes here. He's not really looking like I want him to quite yet. carve some lines in his mouth here. What are those things? What am I thinking? That's not much better. Still looks terrible. Okay, let's get with this. Let's make a bottom lip, make some cheekbones, stick my finger down his throat, Let's pull down his upper lip a bit. Stick my finger down his throat again. Give him a little more chin. There we go, now it's starting to take shape. Now that we have our basic shapes, we can start adding in the details, my favorite part. Now that he has a chin that somewhat resembles mine, we can work on the eyes. Let's give him a sad, pitiful look. After all, he is a poor, unfortunate soul. Love this part of the process, adding all the details and refinements. This is where you can see the character really start to come out. Now we'll give him some little teeth. His chin looks a little thin, so I need to add some more clay to the bottom here. Ooh, he's really starting to take shape now. Now I'll go over his entire body with the texture roller. I used to think that using texture rollers were cheating, but no, it makes the process so much easier. I wanted to make his tentacles look like they were fused to the coral, so we'll go ahead and sculpt those on the body and attach them to the coral. I really thought that this would be a little more difficult, but it turned out to be pretty easy. tentacles some texture and we'll add some final refinements time to paint I really
really wish I was a little more confident in my painting skills, but I really just go by the skin of my teeth and hope it turns out, because usually you only have one chance at getting it painted correctly, like around the eyes. So I just go slow. I also painted the inside of the mouth off camera because I didn't want to take any chances of breaking the teeth trying to get the camera angle right. Have to be really careful around the eyes. If I get any paint on the coral, I can always repaint it black. It's not a problem. You know what happens if you eat an Oreo cookie underwater? It makes your face all black. Adding some brown powder to shade the eyeballs. And then using some brown paint to blend into the black. Then I'll blend in the base tan color to bring out all the details. Next we'll dot the eyes and a gloss varnish. Hey everyone, thank you for watching my video. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And if you think I deserve it, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing. If you'd like to see another video up there in the right hand corner, there's a video called Dark Maiden. And as always, a big thank you to my subscribers. I really appreciate your support. Take care and we'll see you next time.